welcome back to Grad Girl Rambles. I'm Brianna here with a new video. So today I'm going to be talking about a pretty important part of your grad school applications and it's your letters of recommendation. I think letters of recommendation can really boost an application. I also think it's very strange when you think of the concept of a letter of recommendation. In theory there really shouldn't be any bad ones um, but there are out there and I also think it's really interesting because you're going to ask people who can give like the most glowing recommendations for you. So really it, it is putting some personality behind your application, but it's kind of just a weird concept a little bit to me. Sometimes when you're not familiar all that much with grad school and kind of like academia, letters of recommendation can seem a bit daunting. I think there is a little bit of a um, equity issue there with people knowing who you should even be asking, um, what you should be looking for in your recommenders, um, how to even go about asking them. Um, and I'm just hoping to share some of my experience with you um, so that when you are asking for your letters of recommendation, you don't feel like you're lost. So the general idea of a letter of recommendation is like I said before, you really want someone who can really speak to your experiences, who can kind of give this, um, this paint this picture of what it's like to work with you kind of speak to your potential as a future academic or you know somebody in the industry that you're hoping to one day um, work in so when you're applying to your graduate programs um, within the application instructions it should tell you who they're expecting to see a letter of recommendation from a lot of programs kind of recommend i think three is kind of the general number but a lot of programs will accept as many as you are able to give them. I do not know um, what the benefit is of sending a whole bunch, but I know people will send, you know, maybe like three to four to five, kind of depending on um, who you have. So for some people, um, graduate programs might be looking for academic recommendations. So they're looking for um, professors that you've had, they're looking for um, principal investigators who were kind of like, you know, the head of the research lab you may have been in, um, an advisor, something like that. Um, others might be looking for something that's more from like employment. So for me, I, I worked for a few years after I graduated. So my recommenders were, there were a couple, there were mostly academics, some former professors that I kept in contact with. And then, um, there were, I had one that was from my uh, my manager at the time. And I think it's important to make sure you pay attention to those instructions because some programs are very specific about who they want to hear from. And I think that can cause a little bit of an issue, especially if you've been out of school for a while. Sometimes it's hard to find those academic um, recommenders, but I think it's important to also recognize that you know everyone who's applying isn't necessarily coming straight from undergrad so they may not have all of those academic um, people who are still kind of in their um, circle at the moment. So when you're thinking about who you want to ask for these letters, if you're asking someone from an academic setting, like a professor or a research advisor, you really want them to be able to speak about your potential to succeed either in a program like with the coursework or your research potential. You know, when it comes to research, you may not have worked in a research lab that was doing the exact same thing that you would like to do in your graduate program or in your future career, but a lot of those skills that you um, kind of obtained while you were doing that research is very transferable, whether regardless of, you know, the, the subject of the research, the skills really can transfer. So for me, um, research-wise, in undergrad, the, the last research lab I was working in was a behavioral health research lab and we were doing a lot of research with like smoking cessation. And if you've been watching my channel, you know that the research I'm doing now has nothing to do with smoking, drinking, addiction, substance, anything like that. I'm very interested in social emotional learning for young children. Um, and even though, you know, the, the two uh, specializations are not the same, the skills that I learned in um, my undergrad research lab I learned, you know, basic data entry. I learned um, how to do eye tracking software, which can come in handy. I did, um, 
I ran lab sessions with our participants, which is really important when it comes to doing that, those face-to-face -face sessions, especially in the field of psychology. We do a lot of research, whether it's like survey-based or it's, you know, in person and meeting with people. It's really important to have those interpersonal skills. So my PI from that lab was really able to talk about the work that I did there and how that would be transferable into the field and the research that I'm really interested in right now. When it came to um, asking professors, um, I really saw professors where um, I was taking classes, those smaller classes that you tend to have in the later years. Um, I asked a professor who um, I'd had for a couple of classes, but the last class I had with her, there were probably about 20 people in that class. And um, I participated a lot in that course. So when I emailed her, she remembered me. And I, I was a little bit shocked it had been a few years um but when i was in that class i was you know participating a lot and um i guess left enough of an impression that she remembered me but those kind of references or recommenders rather are really great when it comes to um talking about like your critical thinking like this is how brianna participated in class and she always got great ideas great ideas to the table, blah, 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 things like that, which may sound um, a little bit generic, which I think can be a little bit of um, one of those difficult things when it comes to letters of recommendation. When you're asking people to write letters, you really want to think about the people who know you and can really speak to something specific about you. Um, I've seen people talk about letters where their recommender said something very generic that could really be applied to any person in their lab, but you really want to be able to have them point to something specific to actually kind of show that they do know who you are and if they were just kind of writing out this generic letter and then, you know, put your name in there. You really want them to spotlight you and what you did with them. You really want them to spotlight you and your contributions, what you brought to the table. And those professors where you've had a course with them, um, it can kind of give a sense of how you would do, how you would manage in graduate level coursework. And then when it comes to finding people to write letters, if you've been out of school for a while, if you've been working, um, sometimes I know it can be a little daunting when you are looking for someone to write a letter for, you know, your, acad your academic um, path, but maybe they're not in the same field. Um, I was lucky that I was in a research lab where I was working, so the um, my letter of recommendation also transferred over. But there are a lot of transferable skills, like I said before, whether the research was the same or not, whether the job is the same, the skills that you have from that career, that position that you are in, should be able to translate. So like I said, those interpersonal skills, if your um, recommender can speak on a time when you had to overcome something, people love asking those questions about what was a time where something challenged you and you had to solve a problem. Like obviously you should speak about that, um, you know, in interviews and your statements as well. But if your recommender can also speak about a time, a specific time where you were really shining, I think that would be a very important part of your letter of recommendation. I think when it comes to thinking about who you're going to ask, some people will ask only the required number of people. So for a lot of the programs I was applying to, it required um, three letters of recommendation. So some people will only ask three people to write their letters of recommendation. Um, and they will ask them, you know, can you write three letters for X number of schools, which is not unheard of. And I think it's probably very common, especially if you have a limited number of people you can ask. But I think it's also important to uh, make sure that you are not um, kind of taking advantage of, you know, somebody who is very willing to help you, but also has their own kind of time restraint time restraints, especially if you're asking someone who is uh, being asked to, like, to write letters of recommendation for students all of the time, they may not have time to write, you know, 14 letters of recommendation, you know, given that most of them are probably going to be very similar and it sometimes it just takes as much as changing like a university name or, you know, a few tweaks here and there. You don't want to bank on having the same people writing all of them. So if you can, um, 
maybe try to ask like three to five, three to six, and just kind of vary who you ask to write letters for different programs. Um, that way it kind of spreads it out for them and they're not having to write as many letters. You're able to um, use those different people and they can speak to different aspects of yourself. So for me, for, so for those of you who know, I go to Michigan State and the people who wrote letters for this program were, um, one was a former professor, one was a former um, PI of my undergraduate research, and then one was my current, not current now, but my employer at the time, my manager. So one was able to speak to my ability to manage uh, graduate level coursework, one was able to, man um, to speak to um, my um, skills as an undergraduate researcher who was kind of, you know, just a research assistant and doing more of that, um, you know, those day to day research tasks. And then the third one was able to speak more to like my professionalism and also research because it was a research lab and just kind of like the team environment. So they were all kind of hitting different aspects of what I could bring to the table. And I think that's really important. I also think it's important if you know people who are in the field that you're applying to and they know you well enough, I don't think it hurts to ask them for a letter of recommendation either. Um, it definitely doesn't hurt to have people who understand the field write letters for programs that are going to be your step into the field. And then what if you can't think of anyone to write a letter for you? If you're still in undergrad, there's still time. Um, a lot of the times there you have people and you're just not thinking about them. Think of anyone who has, you know, supervised you. Think of anyone who has given you any kind of mentorship. Um, the professor of the course that I was mentioning before was also the advisor of our Psychi um, organization. So I knew her through class. I also knew her as our advisor. And if you're watching this and you're still early in your undergraduate career, I would use this time to really um, get to know some of your professors. Um, they have office hours for a reason. You know, they're not just lollygagging in their offices. Most of them actually want you to stop by and they really want to know you. So if you have questions about material or if you even just want to know that professor, use those office hours, you know, get some help with um, the course material, but also show them your face, especially those large classes where they have, you know, hundreds of students. Get to know them. Put a face with your name because a lot of times they just have their roster and you know some some schools have like those little icons with your picture next to them but let them get to know your personality and then sometimes that'll open opportunities for um maybe you could work in their research lab maybe they have a project that they would want some help on or maybe they are just familiar with you and whenever you take a class with them they know oh brianna's here oh she said that that was a great point like they just really get to know you and they remember your face. Um, so a lot of it is about making connections, which I'm not super great at. I know what you should be doing and I don't always do it, but um, I think it's really important to really use all of the resources that are available to you. And even just asking other students who have, you know, different types of relationships with professors, like how did you get to know so-and-so and how do I do that? Um, talk to your peers, talk to your advisor, talk to um, people in your department, and I think that would really help kind of get some of those people on your radar for um, letters. So when I was ready to start asking um, for letters of recommendation, I wasn't sure how early to start. All of the programs I applied to were due um, early to mid-December, and I remember seeing um, somewhere it said, you know, give them at least four weeks for um for a request and to write the letter and i kind of ignored that completely and i think i reached out to at least a couple of people in august um a few of them i know were you know going to be on leave or something like that so i really wanted to get them before you know everything was an automated reply and you just never know when you're going to hear back but you also want to give them time to respond um, if you ask them four weeks in advance Say your application is due December 1st and you email them November 1st and it takes them five days to respond to you. And then they say, oh yeah, sure. But then they're like, what information do I need? Who do I need to send it to? Blah, blah, blah. That's time that's taken away from them being able to write it. So I'm not saying you have to do like I did and reach out to them in August. I think that is a bit much, but that's kind of just on brand for me. Um, 
but I would even go two months. Give them time, give yourself time to kind of create your um, request. Give them time to respond. Um, a lot of people who are often asked for letters of recommendation get a lot of emails and a lot of them get lost. A lot of the times they don't see it and it just boop, 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 boop and disappears right off the window and they don't, don't see it. Um, give yourself time to follow up if you need to, but don't hound them. Um, you know, unfortunately, when it comes to these things, you you are on a timeline and you know that you have this November, this December 1st deadline, um, but they also have their own deadlines. So give yourself time to kind of do that reach out and ask them. If you have the opportunity, I know we're in a pandemic, but if you have an opportunity to meet with them in person, I would definitely recommend doing like an informal request. So at the time I was working and I did just kind of pop into my manager's office and I was like, hi, um, so I'm gonna be applying to programs. Would you be able to write me a letter of recommendation? You know, something really informal like that. Like we had that kind of um, relationship where I didn't have to make everything so like formalized. But she was like, oh yeah, sure, just let me know what the details are. Great. Um, so if you can do that initial ask in person, I recommend that if you can do a phone call, just something that's so the first time they're hearing from you isn't this like huge formalized request um, so that they know, okay, that's information you're going to be giving me later. And then um, after you've kind of done that first request, if they say yes, then you kind of put together the formal request like, you know, blah, blah, blah. I, um, I'm applying to X number of programs, I'm applying to these types of programs, and they require a letter, a re letter of recommendation hitting on these points. Um, when you give them these points, a lot of the time they will say, what do you think I should highlight? And if you, so like for my manager at the time, I was literally working there, our team was not large, I did not need to tell her what I had done while I was currently working there. But for my former PI, she remembered me, our lab was very small, but because I usually worked with her and the lab manager, she just needed a refresher. Okay, what did you do? Were you running experiments? What were you, were you meeting up with people? Were you doing recruitment? What were you doing? A lot of them really just need kind of the basics of the breakdown. What what type of information is this program looking for and what can I say that relates to what you are doing and what you want to be doing? You don't want them kind of talking about something that really has nothing to do with it. There are so many applications that go through the admissions process for each program, so you don't want these super lengthy letters of recommendation and you also don't want your recommenders like writing this like five page recommendation. Nobody wants to read that. I mean, it's nice. Um, I would read five pages of nice things people said about me, but I'm pretty sure directors of programs do not. And if you don't have a chance to do that initial check-in um, that's in person, even just like a short email, just reminding them why they know you and why they would be key to um, writing the recommendation that you need. If you're asking them to write several letters, let them know how many. Let them know the deadline of the earliest. Instead of giving people several deadlines, honestly, I would recommend you just picking the earliest deadline and using that for all of them. So if you have an application that's due December 30th, nope. If you have an application that's due December 1st, but you have one that's also due December 15th, I would not say, well, I have one that's due the 1st, one that's due the 10th, three that are due the 15th. Like, don't do that. That just gives them too many numbers they need to count, keep up with. December 1st, that is their deadline. And if you really want to make sure they get it in on time, I would even give them a week before that. A lot of the times I have seen so many friends who they've had their whole application turned in so early and then it is November 30th at 11.30 p.m. And they're like, my recommenders have not submitted their recommendations. Am I supposed to call them? It is 11.30 at night. No. You don't want to be in that position so just give them a deadline that's just a little bit earlier but that also means you need to be asking earlier okay something that i think gets people in a little bit of trouble if you are emailing for a request your email should not assume that the answer is yes there are very valid reasons why people would say no people will say no because they don't have the time they have too many requests they've already said yes to 
They don't feel that they know you well enough to write a letter and honestly you do not want those people writing letters for you. They can be very good at writing like very generic like oh yeah she's great loved having her in class but this that's not going to really do anything um, and honestly it's probably a waste of their time to write a very generic letter um, and the admissions um, the admissions committees will see right through that. You really want people who are going to be enthusiastic and ready to write these letters because they're the ones who are really going to shine through when committees are reading your application. So I know that was a lot. I think letters of recommendation can be such an interesting part of the application process. I know a lot of people don't really care for them because like I said, in theory, um, they should all be glowing, you know, hopefully, and I know it does happen, but there shouldn't be letters of recommendation that are bad. Like someone should not agree to write a letter for you if they know that they're going to trash you. Um, and I would really hope that they would say no at that point. But just consider, you know, the timing and who you should be asking. I think if you're planning to apply for programs this coming cycle at the end of the um, 2021 calendar year, I think now is a good time to kind of think about who you're going to be look, reaching out to. And um, if, there, if there's someone that you know you want to ask, but maybe you haven't spoke to them in a couple years, maybe just kind of creep back in there, creep back in their email inbox so that when you do ask, it's not just like, hey, I really need you to write me this letter to do in three weeks. You know, it's, you've had time to kind of get, get you back on their radar. Um, but I hope this is helpful. Um, letters of recommendation, I think, can be either really simple or very difficult. Um, but hopefully this has kind of helped kind of figure out where you should go next. So hope that was helpful. I will catch you guys later. Bye.